has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. All right, for all back on Coast to Coast, I know, uh, you know, Greg Sharp was great uh, talking about Nebraska football. I just wanted to say this. You, they're going to have this uh, Fox show in uh, mm-hmm. Lincoln uh, set up for Saturday with this Oklahoma game. And, you know, they're going to be – they're going to try to sell Urban Meyer. Uh, they're going to try to stick this guy into Lincoln uh, on that show. And, uh, you know, first of all, I want to say uh, I think it's – just damning that they hired him back, to be honest with you, uh, that they put him right back on national television after he got fired for the things he got fired for, that he is just a complete asshat. Like, it, I have never heard anyone ever talk, you know, more negatively or poorly about a human being than they did Urban Meyer as the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars, that he was uh, everything, that he was just an absolute jerk and that everyone hated his guts and he treated people like Shaq and he was just the nastiest SOB ever. And then he's off shimmying and getting twerked on by some little girl at a bar when he didn't get on the team plane to go home with a team. I mean, this guy, are you kidding me that this guy went right back to national television like nothing happened is beyond me. Like, I, I gotta tell you, uh, if I'm running that company, I, I'm not having it. I am just not having it. I'm like, all right, you've, you've worn out. You're welcome. You're done. We're done with you. You can rape, murder, pillage, set fire, go to prison. You can kill animals, kill women and children and babies. You can blow up federal buildings. You can kill and assassinate world leaders now in this country and get your job back in five seconds and make millions. And it goes in broadcasting and it goes in coaching. And uh, when are we going to see John Gruden? Will he be the next coach at Lincoln at at Nebraska? Urban Meyer. I wouldn't hire Urban Meyer to pick up my dog's poop that I walk around the neighborhood and and shovel up myself in a bag. I wouldn't hire him to pick up dog poop. Okay. But they're going to try to sell you Urban Meyer on Saturday in Lincoln. And it is disgusting to me. That is disgusting. I'll tell you what, Carver High, who would you look at to be the next coach at Nebraska uh, moving forward? And I, there is no way in hell I, I would hire Satan, Bezelbob himself, before I would hire Urban Meyer or John Gruden. And, you know, all they do is throw out fancy big names of coaches. Who do you think? And, and I even heard the Domicon and Sue, like, just stop. Just stop with the nonsense, okay? Yeah. My boy should be playing in the NFL still, running after quarterbacks. He shouldn't be the head coach at Nebraska. Let's stop with he's ready to be the head coach at Nebraska. Guys that have played suddenly become managers overnight and, and coaches overnight and all this other nonsense. Who do you like? Well, that would probably complete the bingo card if they went with somebody who's absolutely never coached in their lives. They've tried. Big mistake. They've tried everything else in the last 15 to 20 years. They've brought in the guys who have had success at other Power 5 schools. They've brought in guys who have had success at Group of 5 schools. They've brought in a guy who was a Nebraska legend and was great at UCF as a head coach. Uh, and tried him like where else do you go uh, if you're Nebraska at this point Scotty like I don't know I guess we're gonna have to see where things shake out of course the first name you heard in terms of guys who are kind of established right now that I heard the last few days was the guy Campbell at Iowa State who everybody always tries to hire um, and he never leaves there not that he's so great to begin with I don't know but that's the first name that you heard uh, I would leave there in five seconds. In five seconds, One, yes. I would leave that school, that tiny school for Nebraska. Iowa State will never, on the in the history of the world, I'll be dead 200 years in a casket, and they still won't touch Nebraska when it comes to being a football powerhouse. I would leave for that job in five seconds if I were him. And if he, if he turned that down, then I'd start saying, you're stupid. 
Yeah, I, I don't know where you go then. We welcome in all of our radio affiliates for El Coast to Coast on a Tuesday, Sirius XM 159, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Good to have you aboard. I, I don't know where you go at this point. Like, forget Urban Meyer. I heard that story when he got fired by the Jaguars that, like, no college athletic director in, a, in any school that matters would ever hire him again after the stuff that came out. Somebody will. Remember this, Scotty. It might not be Nebraska, but somebody will because you can always put that morality stuff to the side if it means he's going to turn your program around again. Now, I'm not saying Ed Nebraska is going to do that. But, so, hey, Eddie O, now he loves living the life that he's living uh, partying on the boat, and I think Eddie O likes his money right now. Like I don't, I don't know. He get, he'd make he's a bunch of more money. <laughs> he make a lot more money. Maybe we gotta wait and see who gets fired at the end of this year. But if a guy's getting fired, do you really want to hire him to run your school? If he's just getting fired from a job, I don't know. I don't know what to do if you're Nebraska. He won the national championship in five minutes. Uh, uh, he knows how to coach. Hey. I'll take Eddie O in South Bend. Bring him over to South Bend. We'll get Eddie O Bill over there in South Bend, Scotty. Manny Bill, Diaz. Now that's a name. Bill O'Brien's interesting because he's with Saban now in Alabama, and that's a nice little spot to go after. That's a good one. That could be an interesting Would you try to steal Mike Leach with the air raid? Oh! Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Got this victory last year over Ball State, 44 to 13. The potential look ahead against Auburn, I don't think it happens. They are 33 and seven straight up. They 40 yard line six times. Yep. Now that amounting to three points is unforgivable, but they did move the ball. Yeah, I know it's dangerous to say this, but I'm still going to say it. Oh. It can't be that bad again. Oh. It just can't. Only on Sports Grid, the morning after. I expect it to be run heavy for Seattle, trying to keep this game ugly, trying to keep this game under that total. His rushing attempts prop tonight is 15 and a half. In four of the final five games last year for Seattle, Rashad Penny went over this number of 15 and a half. In the final two games, he had 25 carries and then 23 in the finale against Arizona. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. They might not win six games with Drew Pine as the quarterback. That's how bad. Will they cover against Cal? I don't know. I doubt it. I, I, here's the problem. I haven't seen in two games now the offense do anything that makes you think that they're going to put points on the board. Even, I mean, Cal should have better athletes than Marshall, right? I mean, Cal should have come, even though Cal sucks in the back 12. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. I also feeling really good to have Saquon Barkley. My gosh, what a debut for him yesterday against the Tennessee Titans. Outplayed his counterpart by far. In Derrick Henry, who had a quiet game, Barkley had over 160 yards, also six receptions and a touchdown. Monster game for Saquon out of the box. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, as always, had a big game for him to start in that wild finish between Houston and Indianapolis. 160 uh, there. The Sports Grid Network.
boy Carver High uh, already doing calisthenics, preparing for a trip to the Magic yeah. Kingdom later in the month. And you know, I got to say, it is a smart time to go. Uh, that place in the summer, forget it. It's a nightmare. But yeah. when the kids go back to school, uh, there's nobody right. there. That that's rock star status. You're gonna have a nice uh, trip down there. But uh, I mean, I gotta tell you, you better you better hit some bets between now and then because you're gonna need the money. <laughs> Uh, you're not joking. Uh, it's already been uh, quite the expense, and that's before I've even gotten there. Uh, oh, it's worse really, when you're there. So. It's way worse yeah, when I you're know. there. I know. I know. I, I'm well aware of what I'm walking into. Uh, in a you're few walking weeks. into a year of that's, debt. <laughs> I'm, already, I'm already there, so it's all it's already happening uh, when I get down there in a few weeks. And yes, you're right. I would never go there in the summer. You get you couldn't never. pay me to go there in the summer. But I think she's off school. Like the schools are closed like Monday or Tuesday the week that we're going. So she's only missing three days of school. So I mean that's fine. You're taking her out of school. I'd rather take her Who out of school, about school and actually and actually enjoy myself uh, and not have to deal with six billion people uh, in the place. So that's just fine by me. All right, let's do more college football here. I know you always love the AP top twenty five yeah. early in September when nobody's really played any big games yet. How about Alabama getting penalized for that game against Texas? Georgia, your new number one. Bama slips to number two. Ohio State, Michigan, Clemson round out the top five. USC has fought their way into the top ten. And how about Kentucky and Arkansas? Nine and ten in this week's poll. Yeah, I got to be honest with you. I think Georgia's the best team in, in college football. I think uh, Kentucky and Arkansas and USC – uh, should be higher. I like Oklahoma State and, and USC. And I got to tell you, for my money so far, uh, you know, BYU, that was a big win. They got it done against Baylor in double overtime. Uh, they've won their games. And I would put Michigan in that lot as well, putting up 50 plus points in two games. I, I know they didn't play anybody, Rado State and White, but they handled yeah. their business. Unlike Ohio State, who didn't handle their business barely against Notre Dame and didn't uh, handle their business against Arkansas State and Alabama once again, uh, they did not look good in Austin. So I know everybody wants to crown them. Uh, here we are on September 13th. Go ahead and crown them. Uh, there's a lot of great football to be played. And I got to tell you, I was really impressed uh, with the Tennessee win in Pittsburgh. So I want to see if that team – Heibel's done a great job. Are they for real or not? Uh, I need to see more of Tennessee to believe. But they're in those rankings for a reason because they've been playing some pretty good football. Uh, they certainly have. You notice there was one team, Scotty, not on the AP Top 25 list this week. That would be the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame after the loss at home to Marshall over the weekend. They are now 0-2 as they're getting ready for Cal this week in South Bend. Here's head coach Marcus Freeman giving everybody the bad news about their quarterback and also, who, by the way, like you said yesterday, he sucks anyway. And here he is yeah. also saying it's been a rough couple of days uh, on the campus in South Bend. We are still uh, very positive and uh, optimistic about our future uh, moving forward um, and following in with Drew Pine as leading our our offense, and uh, I'm excited for his opportunity and what he's going to present um, to our football team. And, uh, you know, obviously the last 36 hours um, has been, you know, a reality check for all of us, from the coaches, the head coach, to the assistant coaches, to our players, and doing a deep evaluation of, of everything we're doing and to, um, to really try to figure out what our issues are. Yeah. Mike, you yeah. cannot make decisions on uh, that are that vast in scope in 36 hours. They cannot fix this no. around a conference table with a bunch of guys that have already screwed it up. So the evaluators of their problem are the people that actually screwed it up. Now, look, this guy, let me get down to the bare bones of this. I guarantee you he has talked to his wife laying in a dark bedroom laying in bed with the lights off and his dog laying at the end of his bed going, what have I got myself into? What have I done? Because this isn't going to last. He will not survive this job at the current pace, at the current pace with the people that he's making decisions with that have already screwed it up. It's like, 
I think it's one of those circles of just, you know, yeah. how do you make a, a good move when all the moves have been wrong? Nothing's working. But those are the people trying to make the choices to get out of the conundrum that they're in. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure the priests are walking around telling them to pray about it and to, it's OK. We love you. We made the right choice. Uh, it's all going to work out in the end. I think their season is already over. It's already over. Uh, they lost in, in Columbus. They played better in Columbus against Ohio State than they did against Marshall. And now yep. they got Cal. If they lose to Cal, people are going to start saying firing. Which, like I was saying to you yesterday, it's unfair. I mean, it's four, three or four games the guy's been the head coach, but you can't learn on the job at these big schools. This isn't just Notre Dame. Not in Notre you can't Dame. Learn on the job at Notre Dame, uh, you know, USC, all these places. You just can't learn on the job there. You have to win, um, especially games against Marshall. And this one coming up on Saturday against Cal. He's not Scottie. sleeping. Ten and, that guy's not it's sleeping. Ten and I a guarantee half. it. He's not sleeping. It's, it's 10 and a half. I, I got nothing to do with this on Saturday. I don't want any part of this game. I'll be far away from it, just so you know. I, I Yeah, listen, I'm with you. I am out of the Notre Dame business of betting on that football team yeah. for the remainder of the season. I want no part of that because, look, and here's the truth of it. I didn't bet on them on Saturday. I didn't trust them yeah. Saturday. I don't trust Notre Dame because I watched that kid Buckner play. I'd rather have Bill Buckner as my quarterback at 65 years old with bad ankles. I mean it. Like, that kid sucks. He, he blew out his shoulder. So what? He was terrible anyway. Now they got Pine. And I said this to you earlier. Who's behind him? What garbage do they have behind him? Now, all I hear about is five-star in South Bend. Man, they play like two-star. Yeah, they got a kid, uh, freshman, uh, who obviously hasn't seen any time. Let's hope he's one oh, snap God. away at this point. Oh, God. Uh, as freshman. we're early in the week. We're early in the week. Let me give you some of the big games. Let me give you some of the games for this weekend. Uh, We'll obviously do a lot more as the week goes on. Georgia, number one now at South Carolina this week. They're laying the heavy lumber. We talked about Oklahoma and Nebraska. Noonies kickoff this week. BYU off the late night win at home against against, um, against Baylor. Now plays Oregon, Scotty, at Autzen. And you have Penn State and Auburn this week. Well, I think Penn State will go to Auburn and win. Auburn looks terrible. I think Oregon can get their reputation back if they beat BYU at Outson. That is like the Broncos going into that uh, Seattle game last night with that crowd. You play at Outson, you're going to have a long day. I don't care who you are. And then Oklahoma should roll Nebraska, but it's a, a rivalry game. Be very careful with that number. And then I actually believe Georgia goes to Columbia to Bryce Williams and beats their ass. Michigan State visits the Huskies of Washington. I told you I've seen them the last couple of weeks. Penix playing very well for them. Miami and Texas A&M, College Station. Fresno State visits USC. The Roadrunners of UTSA in Austin for the Longhorns this week, Scotty. They played so good against Alabama. They have to beat UTSA by two yes. touchdowns or more. They need to beat them and say, we are as for real as we looked last week. You cannot have a letdown game in Austin against the Roadrunners. You know why? Because they're like South Dakota State playing at Iowa City against the Hawkeyes. The Jackrabbits gave them nightmares, and the Roadrunners might very well give them nightmares. Roadrunners, very good team, of course, last year. Uh, Played well. Uh, Just lost to Houston in week one. They beat Army this week in the overtime game. So there you go. Some of the big games. I'll give you more as the week goes on. We'll do baseball later too, Scotty, here on Coast to Coast. I mean, it is just unbelievable. We got so much stuff going on. Our boy Chill's coming up. Clarence Hill Jr. in Dallas. We'll talk about the nightmare that is the start of the Cowboys season. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the, the morning Russell after. Wilson. 
we saw movement in the marketplace like fantasy Magic. sports the today cavaliers are a little thin as well newswire minus 160 favorite on the money line today for arizona pharrell coast to coast that's where they win cups they win stanley cups over there give me the game penguins. time decision kind of bizarre when you consider it like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it for one. In game oh, live. Man. Prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live. Overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. But Dr. Chow, you mentioned the injury to Chris Godwin leaving Sunday night football early are you concerned for his role in this offense for Tampa moving forward once you have a setback like this I don't see how he plays next week he looked pretty good but he wasn't a hundred percent and this is the dynamic game of football and this is the risk in what can happen and I don't see him playing next week against the Saints the sports grid network the early line Only 19 points for Tampa Bay. No first half touchdowns. Tom Brady's final stat line, 18 for 27, 212 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. I do give the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a pass for only getting 19 points in this game because as we stated, the goal in the NFL game is just to win. And if you're looking on the opposite side, why are you going to throw the kitchen sink at the Dallas Cowboys when all you have to do is say, let's just not turn the football because the Cowboys can't do that much. Only on SportsGrid. Sports Professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute, Anatomy of Gambling Implementation. Well, we told you earlier in the week about Kansas and the governor placing the first bet on, guess who, the Kansas City Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. But now, as the first week rolls out, they've got some issues. That's 16,000 folks who live in Missouri and other states are blocked from spending the dollars on Kansas betting, geofencing, A company after another decides how to structure that. And it's very clear, unless you live in Kansas or are in Kansas, you can't do this. And 60% of those blocked live in Kansas City, Missouri. Does it put pressure on the Missouri government to get legislation passed for gambling in 2023? You bet. Not just the revenue, but people who feel like they want to place a bet and can't do it. But they look over there and they see it's being done. Sports Professor Ricardo, Sports News Minute. It's chill time. Uh, the legendary writer with the uh, telegram down in Fort Worth, the uh, star telegram, great paper, legendary uh, Clarence Hill Jr. back on coast to coast, a good friend of our shows through the years, uh, everywhere I've ever been. All right, chill. Good to see you, my man. Uh, let's uh, talk about uh, stress. All right. So I've been talking about stress today with like you heard me talking about this guy, Freeman. He's stressed out. We talked earlier with Greg Sharp in Nebraska football about Scott Frost. Believe me, you, he was stressed out. Uh, the third guy on my list is Mike McCarthy. My man has to be stressed out. Uh, and he'd been stressed out for a year and a half. I mean, he went down there for that job. And that guy, I mean, I have never heard anybody say one good thing about him since he's been there. And he has just got to be under a weight of like a go- just an absolute gorilla and an elephant. And the rest of the zoo's on top of his shoulders, too. I don't know how the guy sleeps. Did he shave off his beard? That might have been a start. How did, how did he not know? I mean, you know, the, the crazy thing about it is, you know, in training camp, he was surprised with all the narratives and, and that came out of, you know, the, the offseason. We've been talking about Dak Prescott. Let's just talk about at the end of last season, he goes 12-5, and five, they win the NFC East, and people are talking about getting rid of him after losing to San Francisco. You know, there's the there's – the, uh, certainly the Sean Payton stuff, the Dan Quinn stuff, stuff that Jerry Jones fueled. He's talking about how it's not fair to his family. How did he not know it was like this in Dallas? Who has his head been in the sand? Was he not watching the, the situation with Jason Garrett? Did he not see you know, the Dan <laughs> Campo era? Did he not see all this? He's been around football his whole life. He knew what he should have known what he was walking into. 
he was living on a, a farm. He had a nice spread living out there in like Wisconsin. He had nobody bothering him, like no neighbors within miles. He's probably driving around on a tractor, eating good, you know, like clean beef, had it all going. Then he came into Dallas and I already know, I mean, that that's the, the big D. It's no joke down there. You had better be good. Listen, the guy, you said it, he won 12 games. You would have thought he lost 12 games the way they treat him down there. Well, certainly, it, it, it's, it's, it's the way they lost. You know, and, and you're talking about a franchise and a fan base and an ownership that's frustrated because they haven't been back to the Super Bowl, haven't snipped the Super Bowl since 1995. You win 12 games, you win the East, you think you finally you've invested all this money, you paid Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper, you paid Zeke, you got all these guys here, you got a home game at at and Stadium, and you get embarrassed, you know, and you, you can't, you know, clock management and all this other stuff, you don't get the ball off. And so you, no one remembers 12 and 5. They remember the, the clock running out of you in, in, at the uh, end of the game, okay? That's what they remember. And that's on their minds. And, and 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 how do you get further? How do you, you know, he was, I mean, Jason Garrett got him to the playoffs. Jason Garrett won the NFC East. He was supposed to, a former head coach, a former Super Bowl champion head coach, he was supposed to take him further than that, bring him back to glory. And it's the same old, same old. So when you went into that Niner game last year, I don't remember, like, if you told me before that game on the show, if you thought that they would lose that game, because I know a lot of betters bet on the Niners. I know I did. Did you think they were going to lose that game or did you think they were going to win that game going into that game? Well, I mean, I thought it was a toss up. I thought they certainly thought it was a game the Cowboys could have won and certainly a game the Cowboys should have won based on how they played most of the year. But the, but the Niners came in, in at the end of the season on a roll. The Cowboys weren't playing their best football. At the end of the season, you know, you know, if you remember how they were when Dak Prescott was the MVP candidate early in the season, and you know, right. things he, he he had the hamstring, uh, the, the the calf strain, missed the game, and that offense was not hitting on all cylinders headed into the playoffs. But still, you know, they would, you know, they would within a touchdown with thirty seconds left. You know, if you look at that game, you know, they left plays on the field, and, and the, the 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 most disappointing thing was after the game, Mike McCarthy said that they were nervous before the game. You know, and the Cowboys started out slow. They didn't really play, you know, had all these damn penalties. I mean, you look at the penalties, yeah. and the Cowboys have been the most penalized team in the NFL since McCarthy took over in 2020. You know, they have been their own worst enemy. If they get out of their own way, they certainly would have had a shot to win the game. So you add that all up with the expectations, certainly for the owner, Jerry Jones, who, you know, we're at home. Well, you know, I got all these fans in this building. Everybody's watching, and, and, and we look like the Keystone Cops at the end of the game. That's just not a <laughs> good look. <laughs> Hey, Jill, uh, when you watched that game the other night, I mean, what a disaster. I mean, they couldn't do anything right. And even up front, the you know, because you knew they had problems up front, but then it all just, like, we got to actually watch the problems up front, you know, false starts, everything else. They couldn't move the ball. I mean, they look, you talk about Keystone Cops, they had that going uh, on you know Sunday night as well. What were you thinking when you were watching that game? Like, what a mess! It's gotten worse. Well, and that's just it. I mean, and, and, and the funny thing is that if you're paying attention, you knew it was going to be worse. You know, they got rid of Amari <laughs> Cooper. Okay, the you know as, as bad as you say things were at the end of last season, they had more talent on the field than in the last season than they did to start this season. They lose Randy Gregory, okay? They had three right. new starters up front on the offensive line. Uh, they get rid of Amari Cooper because they're mad because he didn't take the shot. And so they bring a receiving core out there with C.D. Lamb a bunch and, and a bunch of maybes. Guys, outside of C.D. Lamb, no other receiver on that roster who played in the game seven that had ever caught a touchdown pass, okay? And, you know, the number two receiver was Noah Brown, who's been largely a special teams guy. He's their punt protector. That's your number two receiver, you know? So – if you've been watching in training camp, you know, the, the Cowboys didn't score a lot of touchdowns in training camp. It wasn't pretty offensively in training camp, but still, nobody expected that. Three points, they're the only team in the league, the only team in the league, not Jacksonville, not Detroit, not Buffalo, oh, no, not the Jets. Everybody scored a touchdown. The Cowboys did not score a touchdown. And that was before Dak got hurt. It was bad before Dak got hurt. And Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, they, after the game, they were like, we're surprised. You know, we had a great trend. We're surprised 
with, with how we looked, how bad we played, even before Dak Prescott got hurt. That's one thing Jerry talked about today is that all this attention on Dak is overshadowing the fact that we looked bad before Dak got hurt. Those are things that I'm worried about. Those yeah. are things that he, he wants to address. Even before you even get to Dak, that offense, that team looked bad. You know, the Cowboys was number one offense in the league last year, number one in points uh, and number one in yards. That was not on the field Sunday night. <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, Clarence Hill Jr. with us. Uh, I have to ask you, that's what I said on the show Monday. I was like, I mean, they were bad with him, let alone without him. Uh, they were bad with him. And so I guess my question is, you know, Cooper has played before and actually surprised everybody and played well. And today the old man went out and he said, uh, you know, Dak's going to be back in three weeks. Basically is what he said. He said he's going to be back in three weeks. In, in, in Portuguese, that's what he said. Meanwhile, his son's over here saying something entirely different. I mean, they got to figure out a way to not have both of them doing, you know, different shows and saying different things. They got to get the old man like, I don't know. Uh, you tell me, like, when you hear him say that, three weeks, the guy had uh, surgery on his thumb, throwing them, and three weeks later he's going to go out and play like, didn't Russell Wilson have this uh, thumb surgery and he didn't play in three weeks? Who plays in three weeks after they have their thumb cut open? Yeah, you know, I think they're saying because of the type of surgery he had and where it was that it gives him a chance for a faster recovery. I think it's the, the timeline is more four to six weeks. You know, it was initially six to eight weeks and more to four weeks. Six weeks is more likely four weeks. But the Cowboys want to give him a chance to come back in three weeks because all these games are important. You know, and you see the way they play. You know, there's no way the Cowboys are in this thing if he's gone six weeks. You know, and, 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 and certainly if he's gone four games, I mean – I see the Cowboys possibly going one and three, you know, and, and, and so that, that starts, that, that means they're having a one and four start if he misses four games. And, and so they're trying to give him a chance to get back as fast as they can. But I, yeah, I think the timeline is aggressive, but you know, again, you got to understand that we, we have to decipher between Dr. Jerry, owner Jerry and salesman Jerry. There's no way Jerry's selling the team, the franchise, these fans, as the season over. So, you know, so this is this is some of that, that, that optimism he has to sell the fans to keep them coming, keep them coming to the stadium, not give up. He got to sell tickets. He got to sell T-shirts. He got to sell $100 parking spots. He's not going to tell you it's over. He's not going to be back. He wants you at the stadium. They got two home games in the next three weeks. We need J.R. Ewing right now to steal the deal. <laughs> Now what? What's the deal? Uh, it, are they gonna cut a deal for somebody else, or are they gonna ride Cooper? And then, do you think are they gonna lose to the Bengals this week? What? It's fat meat greasy. <laughs> Come on, man. You think you rush the big Bengals? Go Burrow. But they're not bringing in the quarterback. They're going with Cooper Rush and Will Greer. You know, that's that's you know, I think part of the timeline issue because they think he's gonna be back soon is why they're not gonna go get another quarterback. Oh my god. And so what what's the game that you're giving them in the next four weeks? What's what's the game you're giving them? I, I'm giving them Washington. They they, they right. have the they have the uh, they, they they have the Bengals and they play at the Giants on Monday night. Uh, and then they home, they're home against Washington before they play uh, the Eagles. And I'm, I'm going to give them the home game against Washington Commanders and, and, and Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz always, you know, flubs in Dallas. <laughs> hey, Chill, you're the best. Clarence Hill <laughs> Jr., great stuff today, talking about the Cowboys' nightmare that's unfolding down in Dallas right now. At least you don't pay state tax. You got that going for you. I love you. I'll check up with you soon, all right? Uh, in a few weeks, we'll get you back on, see how things are rolling. Good to see you, Chill. All right, guys. All right, there he is from the uh, Fort Worth Star-Telegram. My man, Chill. <laughs> Your heart.
hearts racing, the clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. Pregame, pregame. Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action. From sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Got this victory last year over Ball State, 44 to 13. The potential look ahead against Auburn, I don't think it happens. They are 33 and 7 straight up. They 40 yard line six times. Yep. Now that amounting to three points is unforgivable, but they did move the ball. I know it's dangerous to say this, but I'm still going to say it. Oh. It can't be that bad again. Oh. It just can't. College football today, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game practice. time decisions. Boy, this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In-game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a In-game oh, live oh, prime yeah, time. The major, the PGA In-game yes. live overtime. All done before the final bet. Can get, get the winning edge only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. I'm also feeling really good to have Saquon Barkley. My gosh, what a debut for him yesterday against the Tennessee Titans. Outplayed his counterpart by far in Derrick Henry, who had a quiet game. Barkley had over 160 yards, also six receptions and a touchdown. Monster game for Saquon out of the box. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, as always, had a big game for him to start in that wild finish between Houston and Indianapolis. 160 uh, there. The Sports Grid Network. My man, chill. <laughs> Carver High bringing it. So uh, how about that guy that lost that 56 large on that missed field goal last night? All he needed was the uh, Broncos on the money line for 56000 and he let it ride and could have gotten out of that. I wouldn't have gotten out either. I would have thought that uh, they would have won the game. Two fumbles at the goal line and the missed field goal. You got to admit, the field goal kick was a hell of a kick. I mean, he just missed it wide, right, by a foot or two. It wasn't like it was short. It was long enough. He just missed it a little bit wide, so – what a way to lose uh, 56 grand. That would just, uh, my day would just be, I don't know, the whole week would be ruined. Anyway, uh, you got to get the BetMGM app. Do you know that now if you use the bonus code coast to coast with the number two, coast to coast, you can uh, get a risk-free bet of up to $1,000, one grand, a big K. I mean, you get that fat dime right there. A risk-free dime bet at BetMGM. All you have to do is use the bonus code Coast to Coast. Are you kidding me? Who isn't doing this right now? Immediately, there's got to be something wrong with you. All right, Carver, I a little baseball now. Uh, yes, we got a lot to do here. Plenty of games tonight. We have to get through. I'll give you a couple of highlights from last night. We already talked about Game One between the Blue Jays and the Rays earlier this afternoon. Blue Cover. Jays beat them last night, three-two. And I know that you wanted to hear. The Bichette homer that put Toronto in front for good on Sportsnet. Here we go. 
I hit this bat. And in the air to left field, well hit. Gone! Yeah, I mean, I needed that. They were down in that game. He hit that two-run shot in the eighth inning, and I had that uh, Jays minus a buck fifty rolling, and I had already lost uh, the you know Broncos. I lost that. Remember, I had the Marlins. They were up 2 nothing in the eighth and lost to Texas 3-2. I needed that uh, Jays bat badly. Thank God uh, for Bichette. He's my, he's my dude last night hitting that bet for me. Now, the Cubbies beat the Mets at City Field 5-2 to last night. The Mets did get help, though, Scotty, because the Giants beat the Braves out on the left coast late night Ugh. 3-2, so no blood there. Chris Ugh. Bassett was pretty bad for the Mets last night. Now, this is twice in a week. For the Bassett Hound. Remember last week I played you that clip where he was saying everybody was making too much of a big deal about yeah, the Mets about losing. losing. Well, now last night it was you're making too much of a big deal about how bad he pitched. Here's Bassett. Then the home runs that you, you hadn't been allowed. You also hadn't been walking leadoff guys this year. I think you had walked like four all year and you walked two times. That a little bit surprising for you. Not surprising. I, like I said, I wasn't locating anything. Is that just kind of a feel thing, or what can you put your finger on as to why that was the case tonight? Just a start. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Just wasn't locating. I mean, I'm not trying to make this a bigger deal than what it is. I mean, just a bad start. Obviously, uh, this entire game's on me. Um, it's unfortunate, but I just work my butt off and go to the next one. Yeah, you know, obviously he had it a lot easier when he was playing in Oakland when no one from the Bay Area media, except maybe one or two guys, covers the team. In New York, there's 40 guys with microphones and cameras in your face every night, and they're in your face when you win, let alone yeah. in your face when you lose. When you lose, they blame you, and you either handle it or you don't. Now, I, I got to tell you, the best way to handle it, in my view, in New York is to be funny. Uh, you, either, you just start making fun of them. Uh, you know, you start making fun of the media and they're going to be nasty for a while. But if all you ever do is joke around and make fun of them and play around with them and play the game, you can you can survive in New York. If you just have a sense of humor and, and roll with it and let them abuse you and then give them some back, they actually respect you. But when you start acting like it doesn't matter to you at all and you're making millions in this town, you will be eaten alive like shark bait. Like shark bait, they will, great whites and bullhead sharks will eat you alive in this town. This is New York City. This ain't the East Bay out there with that candy ass media. This is New York. We're not candy ass. This ain't no saltwater taffy. You get eaten alive here. None of that flowers and gardenias out in California with some wine and cheese. None of that soft tissue stuff. And tell me I'm wrong. I live there. I know I ran that town too. Number one. Keep talking bad about me. I'm better than all of you. Boom. There definitely wasn't a wine and cheese meeting between Gabe Kapler and Zach Little last night. Uh, when Gabe took him out of the game, did you see that in the Giant Brave game? Basically, the guy was like giving oh, yeah. Kapler the business on the mound. He's done. Kapler gets, Kapler gets back in the dugout basically without actually doing it, like drag the kid by the ear down the clubhouse steps. Let's go have a word, son. It brought him yeah, right done. down there. He's done. <laughs> Finished. Like they're uh, gonna Cleveland. get rid of him. They're, they're gonna get yes. rid of him, or or he will never pitch again as long as Gabe Kapler's the manager. He not he not gonna there put him go. in a game. <laughs> no. Cleveland beat the Angels five four last night. Good win for Cleveland, of course, Scotty, with where they are in the AL Central. But Angels, there's always a highlight to play, even though they lose every night. Mike Trout, seven games in a row on Bally Sports West. Driven to center field, Mike Trout hit it well, looking to tie this up, he does! Seven straight games with a home run for the kid, Mike Trout, 4-4 here in Cleveland. He's amazing, yeah. and they still lose. I mean, it's just so they unbelievable. Lose. Like It doesn't matter what you do when all you do is lose. Every single night, uh, it is amazing. Rosario Stat had to go ahead RBI double for the guards last night. Francona and Nevin both ejected within minutes of each other. Bad umpiring last night. Astros beat the Tigers. The Buccos beat the Reds last night, Scotty. The Marlins and the Rangers 
split that double header. Dodgers beat, beat the Diamondbacks six nothing. Uh, yes, uh, they did. Dodgers beat the Diamondbacks six nothing. Now they officially are in the playoffs uh, after beating the Diamondbacks last They're night. Good job series. by the. Good, yeah, uh, it certainly looks that way. Let's get to tonight's games. Here we go. We'll start with the Angels and Cleveland. Again, Scotty, uh, Suarez goes for Anaheim tonight. Morris for the Guardians, who right now are minus 130, total of eight. Well, you know, uh, I'm not going anywhere near that team. I'm on the Guardians automatic. Like, you know, are you kidding me? Like, it's just the and Cleveland just beat the snot out of the Twins. And now they're yeah. beating the snot out of the Angels. And they're going to, you know, be one step closer to winning that Central. Hutchinson for the Tigers tonight. The kid Brown is going for the Astros on the road. Heavy lumber minus two twenty-five plus a buck eighty for the Tigers. Total a flat eight. Honestly, I would bet on the Astros if they sent a gerbil out to pitch against the Tigers. Okay, so I'm laying a run and a half. Everything you name it. I don't care if the you know Mother Teresa comes back from the dead and pitches. <laughs> the Marlins have Alcantara going tonight at home, as we discussed earlier on the lion's share against the Phillies. Falter goes for them. Marlins minus 125, plus 105 for the Phils, total of seven. Okay, I have, just so we're clear, uh, I have Alcantara on the uh, first five innings, minus a buck 52. Uh, and, and not only that, so that's my big bet on ForAllInTheBench.com. And I also want to uh, take the Marlins in this game, believe it or not. I think he'll okay. beat them tonight in Miami. I uh, don't have a board for this one, but let me ask you. Game two, Buckos and Reds tonight. Ortiz and Cruz are the starters. Pirates uh, plus 115, Reds minus 140, Scotty. Game two tonight in Cincinnati. Yeah, I think the Reds have hit a wall. The Pirates are pushing them around last night, today. Easy win. I'm going to go back to the well with the Bucks. The Orioles and the Nationals in D.C. tonight. Kramer and Abbott are your starters. Orioles minus 160, the road favorite. Total eight and a half. Yeah, look, I'm taking the Orioles, but their season's over. Same thing with the Rays and the Jays tonight, Scotty. Game two of a doubleheader at Rogers. Chirinos goes for the Rays. Alec Manoa for the Blue Jays. Minus 175. Rays plus a buck 45. Total seven and a half in game two. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay it with Manoa there. And uh, you got to bet on the Jays in the second game. And they had a chance in the first game. And I bet on the Rays and got them... Uh, you know, pregame it, I, I think minus about 20, something like that. All I know is uh, Manoa tonight is the buy, even if you got to drop that buck 75. The Mets have DeGrom tonight at home against the Cubbies and Sampson. Big lumber. Minus 450 for the Mets tonight. Six and a half the total. You can get a way better deal on the first five innings with DeGrom, and, and you can, you know, bet the under. Do whatever you can to avoid laying that kind of wood. Yankees and the Red Sox at Fenway. Garrett Cole and Nick Pavetta. Yankees minus 165. Total eight and a half. I am just chewing my nails. Look, Carver High. I'm chewing my nails over here. And I am just grinding my teeth. There are no more sharp edges on my teeth. They're all, you know, you're supposed to have like crowns on your teeth. Mine have all been yeah. sandpapered down with stress. Every time I watch this guy Ace Ventura pitch, and I bet money on him tonight at minus a buck sixty-two to win that game at Femway against your boy Pavetta Cheese. Give me the Yankees to get it done tonight in that house of horrors, and I hate them forever. All right, we'll fly through the rest of these. Bubich and Ryan tonight in Minnesota. Twins minus one ninety, total eight and a half. Bubik hair has no chance here against the Twins tonight. Mini all the way. Jordan Montgomery goes for the Cardinals. Minus 185 against the Brewers, who have Matt Bush going. Plus 150, seven and a half the total. I'm on the lefty Montgomery and the uh, Cardinals to handle their business tonight against the Brew Crew. 
Waldachuk and Reagans in Arlington for the A's and the Rangers. Rangers minus 130, total eight and a half. I'm on Ronald Reagans. What a disaster, that game. Uh, I'll take a stab at the under because they're both so awful. Yeah, two teams playing out the stretch. Always tough to bet on those. Uh, Michael Kopech and Chad, you're so cool for the White Sox and the Rockies tonight. White Sox minus 200, eight and a half the total. I'm on the White Sox and the over tonight in the thin air. Dodgers and the Diamondbacks, Kershaw and Merrill Lynch Kelly. Dodgers minus 200, seven and a half the total. Under Dodgers, Kershaw, boom. Seattle and San Diego for the next couple days up in the Pacific Northwest. Darvish and Gilbert Grape, the starters tonight. Mariners minus 115, Padres minus 105, flat seven the total. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't get a piece uh, on this one at, at minus a buck 15 on uh, this show, on my site, everywhere. Like, I was driving down the road today with the phone illegally. I'm making phone calls. I, would, I had the app going to bet MGM. I'm over phone. there. I, I can't even believe I Don't skipped that juicy minus a buck 15. Uh, and the Braves and the Giants again out in San Francisco tonight. Kyle Wright and Junis are the starters. Braves minus 165. Eight the total. There's no way I'm not going back to the well with the Braves. I had them last night, and I bent over, and it hurt. And I'm going to take them again tonight in San Francisco. I don't believe in that Giants team as far as you can spit. The night in baseball. There you go. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Got this victory last year over Ball State, 44 to 13. The potential look ahead against Auburn, I don't think it happens. They are 33 and seven straight up. They 40 yard line six times. Yep. Now that amounting to three points is unforgivable, but they did move the ball. I know it's dangerous to say this, but I'm still going to say it. Oh. It can't be that bad again. Oh. It just can't. College football today, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game Penguins. time decisions. Plus, this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live, I all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game oh, live, win. prime oh, time. Is the major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live, overtime. All done before the final bet can get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. I also feeling really good to have Saquon Barkley. My gosh, what a debut for him yesterday against the Tennessee Titans, outplayed his counterpart by far 
in Derrick Henry, who had a quiet game. Barkley had over 160 yards, also six receptions and a touchdown. Monster game for Saquon out of the box. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, as always, had a big game for him to start in that wild finish between Houston and Indianapolis. 160 uh, there. The Sports Grid Network. All right, for all the finish time, Suns owner Robert Sarver, he's toast. Suspended for a year, $10 million fine. A lot of people want him gone completely. All the women that weren't there are offended by it. Uh, dropping end bombs left and right, cussing out employees, screaming and yelling, calling women bees. I mean, this guy, what a gem. Steph Curry says the government rebuffed his offer to help gain Brittany Griner's release. I guess he and Rodman both got swung and miss on that one. Uh, Kairu, the Blues, signed him to an eight-year extension, whoever the hell that is. Jake Paul interested in a Nate Diaz fight. Bowsie would slap the Stockton out of him. Uh, I'd like to see that, uh, actually. I don't think that would happen either. Uh, Nevada State Commission looking at that uh, UFC presser where everyone got in fisticuffs, throwing things, bottles, chairs, you name it. They're very angry. Uh, Anthony Joshua accepts the terms for the Fury fight December 3rd in uh, Scotland where he will have his head knocked off. Minnesota T-Wolf disappointed in Anthony Edwards, Black Jesus for using anti-gay comments in an Instagram video, calling people a bunch of names on Instagram did not go over well. Models wear nothing but sex tape on New York Fashion Week's opening night. They rolled them out naked with sex tape on their private Scarver eye. It was awesome. Rapper P&B Rock, dead after being robbed and shot trying to have some Roscoe's chicken and waffles in Lipstick City. Can a guy go out and have some waffles and fried chicken, Carver I, at the legendary Roscoe's where I have eaten many a night baked on my face in Hollywood? You gotta be kidding me. The guy gets shot dead in broad daylight. Amputee to be fined if he does not come back and collect his leg that they cut off in Spain. They're like, come get your leg that we cut off of you or we're gonna fine you $1,500. Are those in pesos? I don't know, but uh, I don't know if I'd go back to get my sawed off leg, Carver High. Check for in-game plays all night on my site. ZTD is next with the one and only Gabe Marenzi. I'll see you tomorrow on Coast to Coast. Have a great night.